So here we go. Let's go to loops. And uh, you have seen loops. Why do we want to use loops? So well, uh, you want to get away from the idea of hard coding everything, right? You want everything to be dynamic. And one way to do that is to use loops. And we're going to see a few examples of that today. Uh, loops operate, uh, they allow you to loop through uh, a block of code. And they actually, for example, if you're search, doing a search, you could loop through thousands and thousands of entry, entries looking for something, as opposed to trying to do it by eye, one by one. So they're very powerful. Uh, there are several loop operators in Java. Uh, there's the while loop, the for loop, the do while, and the uh, enhanced for. So we're going to look at those today. Basically, a while loop uh, checks to see if a conditional has been satisfied. And if that conditional has been satisfied, then it just executes the statement. Okay? Uh, I don't use while loops as much. Some people love them. The problem with while loops is sometimes you can get into an infinite uh, looping scenario. And like I say, it's pretty much just a programmer, uh, programmer's you know, preference. Uh, I think a lot of programmers use while loops. I typically stray, stay away from them because I wrote a code a long time ago, many, many years ago, with a while loop that got me into an infinite loop, and, I, and I, my program crashed over and over again. So uh, he's just going to tell you how to create a while loop. Very easy to do. And you just first have initiate a parameter. And we're going to call it i. And while i is less than 3, then we're going to print out uh, this little, little rule here. And then we're going to increment i. So i is incrementing. And so it checks to see if i is less than 3. If once, when you go through the very last one, when i is 4, then this will no longer work. And the loop stops. What, if, what happens if you leave out i equals i plus 1? i is always 0. It's always less than 3, so you're in an infinite loop. So it just keeps going and going and going and going. And that's why I shy away from, uh, shy away from this, because I'm going to accidentally click this one day, and I'm going to accidentally delete that line, and my program is in an infinite loop. So I like for loops in a sense. They're a little bit more structured. But still, lots of people use while loops, so don't let me discourage you on that. And not only that, you're going to get code where people use while loops that you're going to need to work with. So you definitely need to understand how to work with it. I'm actually going to look at the for operator. This is my favorite uh, looping uh, mechanism. And it's just how it's very structured. And basically what you do is you put in an initialization. You put in a condition, and you do an update. So actually your condition is right here. Your update is right here. And it executes all the statements in that. It's very structured, and I use it a lot. We're going to show you examples of that today. And then let's go down. And so here's an example of a for loop. The first thing you want to do in a for loop is go ahead and uh, create a variable. Uh, um, and I'm going to say we're going to initiate an int is integer, and then i equals 0. So you start with 0. And we're actually going to do the same thing that we did with the while loop, but in a for loop format. So when, as long as i is less than 3, then uh, we keep iterating through the for loop. And then we have this condition i equals i plus 1. And basically, we'd use i plus plus. Do you remember what i plus plus means? Absolutely. So I wouldn't use this statement right here, i equals i plus 1. I would just use i plus plus. And, uh, and then if you want more than that, you can do i plus 2. If you put i plus 2, then it would skip 2 every time. If you do i plus 3, it would skip 3 every time. So uh, you just need to be aware of that you can change this number. I typically use i. Okay, so that was just the for loop. And then he's going to take a look at another one. Uh, uh, basically, there's some very important uh, statements here. One is break and one is continue. And break terminates a for loop or a while loop. So what can happen is you can actually be going through, for example, 100 iterations. And you're waiting for this one condition to be met. And here's an example. Well, if it's 50, then break out, the entire, out of the entire loop and stop. Okay. Now, where this might be important is uh, maybe you have a group of names okay, and you're doing a search. And so you're going to search through 5,000 names, and you're looking for Mike Lively, my name. Well, as soon as you hit Mike Lively, you don't want to keep iterating through the loop, right? You want to break. So what you're going to have a condition in here, hey, search these 5,000 names, but if you hit Mike Lively, what? Break out and stop searching because you found him. And that would be a perfect use for the break. And you've seen break already in switch statements. So it's a useful mechanism in programming. Mm-hmm. There's also another mechanism here which is not break because you may want to keep iterating. But you may not want to execute some code for a certain iteration. That should be a 4. Okay, He's made a mistake in his uh, lecture notes. Okay, So it should be 4. Thank you for pointing that out. So that should not be FO. That should be FOR. And so what we're doing in this particular case, we're iterating through this entire thing and we're printing out uh, this rule plus i. But when you get to, if i is equal to 50, then we continue in a sense we, 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 we don't print 
we just go to the back to the for loop and then we start going through it again. Okay? This can be also a useful statement. I, I typically don't use this as much as I might use the break, but a lot of people do use this, uh, just the type programming that you're doing. And when you get to mathematical programming, you definitely need something like this. A lot of people use it. And you can see right here there are, they are using the I++ as opposed to I equals I plus 1, which you typically use. And uh, as long as you're less than 100, you keep moving through. And if I is equal 50, you just skip that one, but you keep moving through. So uh, let's move from there. Maybe I'll remember what I was going to say as we move on through the lecture. Uh, embedded loops, uh, let's take a look at that. It's basically, this is just a nested loop. He's using embedded, but it's nested. We basically just do have two for loops, one inside of the other. So the way this works in the nested loop is that it will start the loop, execute this loop first, and then it will execute the outside. So you start with i equals 0, go to 2 to 4. Then you go i equals 1, go to 2 to 4. i equals 2, go to 2 to 4. And then i equals 3 does not execute y, because that's less than i equals 3 is equal to 3, not less than 3, so it stops at i equals 3. So the way nested loops work is it first executes the inner loop, then the outer loop. Okay. So outer loop, inner, outer loop, inner, outer loop, inner. Okay. So we'll get into some of those as you move on in programming, just to keep that in mind. And you, you know, it might go, it doesn't make a lot of sense or until you get started. Any questions about loops? Maybe we should go to Eclipse and look at a few. Okay, so I'm going to bring my clips up here. All this assignment has been sent to you, so you can actually go through this and work through it. Lots of cool stuff here today. So here's the while demo right here. You, you see that? I'm going to do while first, and then I'll, do, then I'll do, do while next. Okay, in this particular code, what I'm doing right here is I'm declaring a variable, i integer count equals 1. And then I'm doing a while loop uh, for count less than, less than 11. And then I'm just going to print out, hey, count is whatever that count is. But what, at the end of that count, I'm going to count plus plus. So if count one and I go plus plus, it will be the count next. If it's one, I go, two, right? And then I go to plus plus, what is it next? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's go ahead and run this code and see what we get printed out. Let's run the code real quick here. And so this probably, this sounds pretty easy to you, right? We're doing pretty, this is pretty easy stuff, right? So if I open that up, you can see what I get is count equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not a problem. So that's easy stuff. And uh, so we've got a lot of easy stuff in the lecture today, easy content. And Bucky does very similar examples. These are not Bucky's examples. I program these myself, but his are very similar to mine. So once you've done the while loop, but the problem is if the condition is not met, and you might want to run the first iteration, then you need a do while. So let's bring up the do while now. So in the do while, you actually have the do statement right in the beginning. So you run that statement first. Then you check the condition, is it less than 11 or equal to 11? If so, stop. So what I need you to do is kind of just take a look at that example for me real quick and see if you understand that. So what happens is, is you execute this statement first, then you look at the while loop and look at the condition and says, is that, is that going to work? If it's not met, then you go back to the do while and, you keep, and then you keep going round and round in a circle. Okay, so that's the do while. Once again, watch Bucky's videos. We are going to move kind of fast here today because this stuff I think is pretty easy and there's a lot of content Bucky's already gone through so no reason for me to go on and on with it. But here we're going to take a look at the for loop next so let's look at that. And in the simple for loop all I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm, I'm calling the uh, java.language.system.out uh, so I can get rid of that system.out name so I'm saving myself a little space here. We've talked about that already so I'm using out.print. And what I'm doing here is I'm starting with uh, one and I'm going through a count of less than or equal to 10. So when I'm 11, I stop counting, right? I stop executing. And then I just run this. Let's run the program. And there it is. The value of count is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Done. So we essentially did the same thing as we did before with the while loop. We just do it with a for loop this time. And what I did, I iterated through everything. And when this iteration was complete, then I just printed out, hey, I'm done. Uh, there you go. You just want to make sure that you understand that, that everything has to be iterated here. When that's done, then this code is executed at the end. All right, so that's a, uh, a for loop. And then I want to look at another example here. Hold on. All right, here's an enhanced for demo. And once again, this is not treated in the MIT lectures, but we're going to get to arrays. So I think at this point, we're ready to hit uh, uh, the MIT arrays. Okay. And then we'll come back and we we'll start looking at this because we're moving on to the array side. So let's move on to that right now.